Well, it's spring here in the South anyway, and we're talking about growing your own food. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet, where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey folks, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. And welcome to the Road by Road Garden Show, where we talk about growing your own food in your backyard vegetable garden. And in the South, where we live, Zone 8, spring has sprung. Mm -hmm. We got everything popped along. I got my watermelons planted. Tomatoes. Tomatoes planted. Peppers planted. Green beans. Not quite. I'm a week off of my green beans just because I ran out of time. And I got my corn planted. And that's what we're talking about today, folks is corn. Everybody loves corn. It's not that complicated. We'll have to move you through the process of why you should be growing your own corn in your backyard garden. So what have you got growing that you want to show everybody? Because everybody around here is crazy, crazy in love with this. Okay, so let me start this off with, I bought this at a big box store back in November and somebody foo-fooed on me buying it that it wasn't going to work. <clears throat> I don't know who that could have been. Um, but it is ready to harvest and it is celery. I grew this in a root pouch, a 45 gallon root pouch, and it's just overloading. I had seen some other people grow celery. I didn't know we could grow it here and it's on 8B. But it has done awesome, don't you think? I do. I really do. Everybody here is super excited. We take turns going, and you grew this in a root pouch. Uh -huh. We take turns going down there to carry people down there to show it. Real, and it's beautiful. I tell you what, let's show up a picture of that. Okay. What it looks like in the root pouch here. Everybody here is crazy about it here. So to give a little backstory, of this right here, I was at a commercial greenhouse operation back during late summer in Florida. This was early fall, late summer, and they had a high greenhouse full of celery plants. And up to that point, I know you call me naive, call me whatever you want to. I had no idea we could grow celery in this part of the world. I, for some reason, thought all the celery was going to California. Well, I asked the guys down there, and they said, no, a lot of the celery is grown down in Florida. Mm -hmm. So when she found these transplants and bought them, uh, I didn't think it was going to do well, but has since then, I've done a lot of research and I've been in contact with one of the breeders that we work close with on other things that sells celery seed, doing some things there on that. We're going to be offered celery seed later on this year in the summertime. And we've been working on some varieties and we're actually going to have a couple of trials doing. We're going to trial a couple of varieties against one another. The great thing is plant like onions, plant yeah. it in the fall. And over winter. And over winter. And there you have it early spring. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't think it's going to be able to take our hot summers here, but I think you could grow it on into the spring a little bit further than what it is now. And I treated it just like my onions. So when I fertilized my onions, I fertilized this broccoli, mm -hmm. treated it exactly I mean, the same. You said. I mean, celery. <laughs> exactly the same as my onions. Um, nothing's been put on it other than micro boost. Yep. And some for, uh, regular the fertilizer. Ammonia, what, whatever ammonia, onions. Stuff. So if any of y'all out there have experienced growing celery in the past, we'd love to hear your story and what works best for you. When do you grow it for your zone and when is the best time to grow it? Uh, there's only a couple of three varieties out there that's available for the home gardener there. There's a new upcoming variety here that we got some seeds ordered, some we're going to be some trialing on. But we're going to be excited to offer this next year and I'm going to grow me a bunch of celery next year. <laughs> I, what I've got, I only had four or five plants. I'm going to put in my freeze dryer mm -hmm. to preserve it. But it tastes, it's like everything else. It, I mean, it tastes like celery, but it's just got a better taste it than does. what you I buy in the store. Well. And it doesn't take many plants to have plenty mm -hmm. of celery. I noticed that. Yeah. So, wow. Celery, folks, if you didn't know, and I did not know. So we're getting into springtime. I planted my corn this last week and we thought, man, we got to talk about corn again. Because for us, and I'm not sure this is for everybody, because I think corn is one of those things that don't everybody grow because they're intimidated by it a little bit. For us, it's been a staple, a staple in our pantry for, what, 35 years? 38. 38. 38 years, it's a long time. Yeah. I don't ever remember us not putting up corn. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Now we may have put it up. Well, there may have been a year or two where he might have some yeah. health reasons or something. Other. Yeah. Um, and when we first got married, we'd go, we'd go help my mother, and it would be an all-day family affair. All my sisters, my grandmother, my mother, even my aunt sometimes. And then we just split it all up. Now that was. We slung some corn. We those slung days. some corn because you figured we had to split it up between five or six different families, yeah. so we had to have a lot of corn. Since then, we've kind of narrowed it down a little bit, and we just do it with our immediate family now. And sometimes your mother will come help. Yeah, and I'll go help her. And you'll go help her, but see, your sisters and everything's not into it as much as we are. And of course, our children, some are some into it, some are not. So. It's not near as big a deal as it once was for us. But we have learned one thing in the last year that I think everybody finds interesting is canned corn. Yeah, yeah, canned corn. Um, I only put up a small amount last year of the canned corn, but I plan to put up more this year because um, we really like it. And I was going to show you how I prepare it. Now, I warmed this up before I came in here. What I like about this idea here is, is it didn't take any refrigeration. No. Uh, so I've got some celery in here that I diced up. And you want to heat your corn up. A um, little bit of butter. You can actually leave that out, but everything's better with butter. Speaking of butter, I'm going to make me some homemade butter. Are you? Yeah. We have a friend that gave us some uh, fresh cow milk. It's got, still got the cream on it, so we're gonna do us a whole, we love butter. So this is some warrior bunch of onions that I freeze dried and some cilantro. Now if I had some fresh little grape tomatoes, that would be good in here also. And then of course some salt and pepper. I might put too much pepper in there for you. Mm. She stumps her toe on pepper. I love pepper. But isn't that pretty? Look how good. You want to taste? So this is a meal that we had the other night. Mm-hmm. Or, or part of our meal here. So the thing about this is, people, you can grow your own corn. You can put it up. Now, we do it two different ways. We do it and we freeze it as this pack right here is. And this is more of a cream corn that we've done since we got married cream corn. We've always done, we just started doing the canned corn. The canned corn I really like because heaven forbid okay. if we didn't have power we got something there you can eat there. But we love it both ways and would you say that last year you put up equal amounts of each one? No because I um, I never put up canned corn before so I wasn't sure. Well, so I You just, didn't have confidence did you? Well and I did have one jar not sealed that had a little issues with it um but until i know that it's something we'll eat i'm not going to put up a big batch right but i will this year you want to taste yep now the canned corn is crunchier than the, the cream corn it's like whole kernel corn mm -hmm. yeah now this i actually you cut the kernels off and then um, slide down through there and get the cream out. With this, uh, it's just cut, you go a little bit deeper and cut the corn, kernels off. Isn't that good? Now this, you put up in the spring or fall? This is spring. Mm -hmm. This is G90. Mm -hmm. This is G90 corn right here. Mm -hmm. And this was, this was part of your, uh, when you Previous didn't... year, yeah. I've got one pack left over yep. from the previous year. So last year, during the springtime, I grew G90. Then in the fall, I grew the Seminole XR. So what ended up happening for us is uh, I wanted to try Seminole XR for the fall crop because I've always grown ambrosia before, and I wanted to see how it would do, so I grew it. But we had enough corn last year that we put up with those two different crops because we made really good spring crop and a really good fall crop as well. So we put up plenty of corn. <coughs> have bones in it. It's got a little pepper in it. <laughs> no, the, the cilantro is pretty. Yep. That when you freeze dry that cilantro or those onions, you just got it's like you cut up fresh right in there. Mm -hmm. yep. Now everybody don't like cilantro, but we do. We like it. That's a good little 
good little side dish right there. It's easy to do. Sort of like a corn salad. Yep. All right, so let's move into corn right here. And let's talk, we're gonna talk about primarily, we're gonna be talking about sweet corn today. And we made a little extra in there at the end with some field corn. So sweet we have corn. a lot of corn videos out there. Mm -hmm. And we'll link the playlist up here. So what we're gonna to do today is just kind of briefly touch on some different, some of the most popular questions we get about corn. Mm -hmm. Before we do that, let's talk about why you want to grow your corn. So why we grow our corn is to have a staple that we can pull out of the freezer and eat at any given time. Or off the shelf. How often would you say we eat corn? At least once a week. At least once a week. So you plan on when you're putting up, to put up enough that we can have it once a week year round. Right. So I, I try to have, yeah, a bag a week. Mm -hmm. And most of the time we eat it on Sundays. Sundays, because that's your dad's favorite thing that i yep. cook and he always is over here on sunday yep all right so let's talk about how much corn would you need to grow if you was a family and, of two and in this bag it's about three cups of corn mm -hmm. i used to put more in the bag but as our family that's here on sunday dwindles this is the perfect amount and i don't have any leftovers so if you wanted to have some for leftovers i would do more so these three of us eating off this meal mm -hmm. right here yeah all right, so I'm going to give you some, uh, some of what we planted and how much we yielded. Maybe this can give you an idea of how much you need to plant. If you got a family of four, just simply double this right here. All right, so last spring, I planted a 30 by 45 plot mm -hmm. of G90 corn. I hadn't grown G90 in a long time. G90 is a yellow corn, as you can see right here. It's a good corn, but it is what we consider one of the easiest ones to grow. All right, I had eight rows, 45 foot long on 36 inch row space. It yielded 410 ears of corn because we kept up all this because we wanted to know how much we was going to get off this plot of lamb here. So 410 ears, we ate 50 ears fresh. Well, so we gave some away to the neighbors got some and all that. You creamed 360 ears of that. And you had 50 packs of corn. So we had a pack of corn for every week out of the year minus two weeks. There. And you uh, put up a few in the jars over there. Mm -hmm. All right, so you had plenty of corn for a year off of that one spot that's 30 by 45. So if you got a family of four, you probably need to grow twice that much. And that gives you an idea. Now, that that I planted took a pound of corn seed. And I probably had a little bit left over because you don't get anything exactly. But I don't know exactly what a pound of corn seed costs. $29. Something like that. $29 or $30. Some of it's more expensive than others. But that's a lot of corn. And I know you got other costs in every size seed. I know that. But for 30 bucks of uh, seed, 50 packs of this, and then we have 50 ears that we eat fresh out of the garden yeah. is a and I'm lot. I'm not sure how much frozen corn costs because, like I say, I don't know that I've ever bought any corn. We don't even buy canned corn. Mm -mm. So we don't, we don't know what corn is. We know what this is. We know what it was treated with and what it hadn't been treated with. We know how it was grown. We know how it was processed. So we just feel a lot better doing that. Yeah. And we'll put these up on the website too. Yep. I mean, on the screen so yep. you can see them. Yep. All right. On corn spacing, you normally want to do 36 inches is my standard response. Now you can go down to 30 inches, but 36 inch spacing is what you want to do. And we're going to go over some varieties. Let's just touch on some of the touch points of corn in case people haven't seen it out there. Corn is one of those crops that we call kind of difficult to grow for the average person. And once you get the hang of it, hey, you got it. And if you've ever been farming much in your life and now you're gardening, you probably understand what I'm talking about. Corn does have very little room for air, and I'll tell you the reason why. It is such a fast grower. It grows so fast that you got to have everything there when it needs to be, or it's going to get damaged somehow or another, or it's going to stress, and that's going to have an impact on your yield. So that's one of the things. So fertilization, irrigation is two of the biggest things that we see people have a problem with there. So let's get into some of the questions of what people post to us, or what they ask us about corn, and we'll kind of try right. to answer that and move along. One of the things uh, is how much and when to plant. We kind of covered that. Um, 
do you advise transplanting corn? You know, I do not. Now, a lot of people do. I've done it in the past. I got a good friend that's doing it now, Donnie Glover over there. But Donnie is a is an ex corn breeder, and he'll really admit it's kind of tricky to transplant corn. Um, you have a very, very small window of when you can transplant it. And most people miss that window one way or the other. So I don't recommend transplanting corn. Direct seed it and I think you'll be better off. Spacing and timing of planting if you want to plant different varieties. Yeah, so uh, normally I plant my corn sometime in March. I have done it and I got friends that do it at the end of February every year. But I will tell you this, if you plant your corn in February and I plant mine the second week in March, they're going to come off at the same time because the, the heat takes care of that. So normally for us, zone eight, plant your corn in the middle of March, your sweet corn on that right there. Now, you talking about pollination? Not yet. Okay. So um, you're talking about space and you're talking about plant space. We did 30, 36 inch rows in the row plant. No, this is like, if you want to plant two varieties of corn, how long do you wait between planting each variety so you won't have cross pollination? It's a little iffy because you don't know what the weather's going to do. So if the weather is normal and you don't plant too early, just like I said just a minute ago, if you plant at the end of February and I plant at the middle of March, they're going to come off at the same time. So there's a great possibility they're going to cross pollinate. Now I had a caller just a while ago. He said on your website, Temptress Corn says it will not cross pollinate. That's correct. So regardless of what you plant, field corn, sweet corn? It won't cross pollinate. Okay, that's right. what I told them. Yeah, you have to worry about some of the ones, and you really, people overblow this out too much, but some of the ones like Silver Queen and Silver King and Bodacious Peaches and Cream, some of those will uh, possibly cross pollinate. Now, cross pollination is not the end of the world. If you're not growing a seed crop, don't worry about it a whole lot. If you plant a yellow corn and you got a white corn cross uh, close by, yeah, they can mix up and you can have some yellow and white, yeah. but it's not that big of a deal. I read, this is on one of our standard responses, that field corn needs to be isolated from sweet corn so there's no cross-pollination, cross and that if you're in an agricultural area, try to plant your sweet corn 300 feet from the nearest cornfield. Correct. Now you're talking about field corn versus sweet corn. Well, just a minute ago, I was talking about different sweet mm -hmm. corns. Yeah, you're correct. If you got field corn, you definitely need to do it further away, or you can create that window and do it that way. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, because we don't have that much room. We can move it away. So what I do is I plant my sweet corn. I planted this last week. I'm probably going to wait three to four weeks before I plant my field corn. And that's going to give me a long enough window there so we don't have to worry about cross pollination. Okay, on the same subject, what causes lack of pollination? Like the ears with few kernels on it? We see that all the time. People show an ear up and it doesn't fill out all the way to mm -hmm. the top. Most of the time, that is from, it's a pollination issue. Corn is pollinated by the wind, not by insects. So you got to grow them in these blocks instead of these long rows. As I said the other day, I, about a 30 by 30 plot square i think it's about the smallest plot you need to do it simply because of pollination can you grow it in a raised bed you can grow it in a raised bed i don't recommend it people do it and you see people online youtube whatever doing it i think your time is better spent growing other things in a raised bed besides your corn plant your corn in these blocks like i was talking about those 30 by 30 and i think you'd be better off if you just had to grow you four or five corn stalks to satisfy that you could do it you can do it that way. I wouldn't count on making much corn out of a raised bed. What's your best advice to give when your corn gets blown over? Just leave it be. Sun to pull it back up, and we have this happen every year. And I'll be honest with you, I've had it happen a fair amount and during my life too. Uh, if it gets blown over, one of those thunderstorms come in when your corn is fully grown and, and blows it over, the sun will draw most of it back up the next day. Can be extremely disheartening. But most times, just leave it alone. The sun will pull it back up. There's been one time a hurricane come through here that blew my corn down. That I lost it from being blown down. It blew a lot of things away. That blew a lot of things away. If you're using drip tape, how deep do you need the drip tape versus the corn on top of it? So what you're asking is how far do I bury my drip tape, and then when I come back, how far do I plant? So in a garden situation, now if you go online and look at this, you're going to get some different opinions because a lot of corn planting uh, material out says to plant corn deeper. But when you're planting in a garden situation, you've got plenty of moisture that you can put on it, 
when it needs to be, you can do things a little bit different. I normally put my drip tape, tape down two to three inches and I plant my corn anywhere from a half inch to an inch down on top of my drip tape. Okay. How to choose your sweet corn variety? Now that's a great one right there. So most people get hung up on particular varieties. And I would dare say, I think you'll agree with me, the most popular variety are silver queen. And peaches and cream. And peaches and cream. If you was to ask somebody that's been growing corn for 30 years, what's your corn that you grow? They're going to tell you one of them two there. Mm -hmm. Now there used to be a variety there called Merit that a lot of people grew. Merit has gone by the wayside. Merit is no more. Now those corns were great and still are but there's a lot better corns out there now than they were then. So I would encourage you to not get hung up on one particular variety because it's easy to have. I'm kind of on that right now. I'm on one particular variety. But there's great corn varieties out there. Some of them have different levels of difficulty as far as growing them. And let's go over that. This might help you a little bit decide which one you want to grow. All right, I got this big old graph right here. Corn varieties by grower. And let's talk about how much experience you got growing corn. The first one is the easiest ones to grow are your G90, which we have right here, Silver Queen, which we have probably grown more Silver Queen in our life than we have any other variety, Stoll's Evergreen, which is on this whole list. Stoll Evergreen is the only heirloom that we have on the whole list. And then we have Sugar Buns. So if you're new to growing corn, I would definitely tell you to grow one of these four here. Now, then we move on to the middle level grower. These mid level varieties here offer more. They have more sweetness to them. They have other things that they last longer at harvest time. They have a longest harvest winter uh, interval. And the mid level ones are peaches and cream, which is another, as you said, super popular variety. You reckon why? Because people like the bicolor and the name just sounds as good. It just sounds good on peaches cream. Ambrosia, which is another good one. Ambrosia has always been my go-to variety in the fall. Ambrosia is also a, a bicolor. Then we got Silver King. And I grew Silver King probably 15 years ago. And I was not I was not crazy about Silver Queen because I, I think I tried to grow it the same way I did Silver Queen. And it didn't do as well for me. Incredible, bodacious, and then Greg's favorite at the moment is Seminole XR. I'm, I, that's the one I'm on. That's the one I grew last fall. I just love that variety at the moment. Now, some of the hardest ones to grow that probably have the most to offer as far as flavor and sweetness are Honey Sled. You remember about four years ago we grew Honey Sled? Mm -hmm, I did. Really sweet variety. I, I, I didn't care for that much sweetness. No, but a lot of people do. If you was to do a taste test, I'll guarantee you it would probably win over some of the varieties that we like. Mm -hmm. Temptress, Providence, Avalon, Primus, Serendipity is one of our most popular varieties. Yellowstone, Navarra, and Eden are the hardest ones to grow. Now that being said, don't be intimidated by that little graph we did and say, well, I won't try some of these. Honey Select, whatever, but it's harder to grow. You can grow it, it's just, it takes more, a little more attention. They're not quite as forgiving. Okay. I'm talking about as far as fertility and, and uh, irrigation watering goes. Now let's talk about watering just for a second. We always plant ours on drip tape. We have for a long time. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's the only way you can do it because I grew up for years with overhead irrigation. But I will tell you this right here. If you're planning on doing overhead irrigation, you better have your strategy in, plan, in place before that corn gets up five or six. So when that corn starts tasseling is the very moment you cannot stress that corn. It needs the most moisture. So if you're going to overhead irrigation, what I used to do is I took a barrel, a 55 gallon metal barrel, and put it in the middle of my corn patch, and I would put my sprinkler on top so that it could water overhead. Mm -hmm. I had about a five foot sprinkler. I would sit on top of that and I could get over the top of it. Otherwise, I couldn't water it with a sprinkler because my sprinkler was not tall enough my point is, if you're going to grow it and do overhead irrigation, be prepared for what you're going to have to do when it gets big. Yeah, I remember you doing that. Yep. And you get soaking wet, wallowing out there in the middle of the, <laughs> in the middle of the night, you're sneaking out there trying to get your water. Yeah. yeah it wasn't fun. Another question is when to fertilize. When to fertilize. So I like to fertilize right when it comes up. Sometimes I, I have been known to do a pre-plant, but most of the time. If you did a pre-plant. I use complete organic for a pre-plant, put it down there a week ahead. Now this is ideal, folks. 
Put your complete organic down a week before, maybe two weeks before, into your soil where your rows are going, not just where your rows are going. When you plant, after it comes up and it gets about two to three inches high, I do another lot fertilization on it as well from there. If I'm doing drip injection, I do it every 10 days. If I'm doing a granular side dress, I'm probably going to end up doing it about three to four times. You're better off to split those applications up and do it all at one time. And then I rotate between a regular balanced fertilizer, such as 10-10-10 or a 20-20-20, and Chilean nitrate or ammonia nitrate. Mm -hmm. Let's see, ammonia nitrate would be okay. Hold on just a minute. Chilean nitrate. We got calcium nitrate, and I normally don't use it on corn. Ammonia sulfate, I normally wouldn't use. Yeah, ammonia nitrate or Chilean nitrate with alternating with the balanced fertilizer. And if you look on Hoss University, under our growing guides, all this is spelled out, even the fertilization schedule. Mm -hmm. um, you can easily reference that. Harvesting. When do you harvest? I harvest when that, uh, and we, I think we've got a video on that, but it's when that silk gets nice and brown, you harvest. And that's the good thing about some of these newer varieties that we talked about that's harder to grow, is they have a longer window of when you can harvest them. Now, the, the, the simplest or easiest ones to grow, you got a smaller window when they get ready to harvest. When that silver queen gets ready to harvest, you got to harvest and you got to do something with it that day. What about um, field corn? Now, that you're not... There's two different ways of field corn. Now, we can eat field corn in the milking stage like we like to do sometimes. You do. I don't care for it. Really? Yeah. I like to put it on the grill and grill it and, uh, and eat it in the milking stage. Now, field corn, after it dries out, such as this right here, you uh, you want to harvest it when your moisture comes. can't get down your Everything's totally brown on the stalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to talk about the different types of sweet corn or not? No, we've already no. covered that. Okay, I think that's all. Let's pieces. talk about harvest just a minute. Let's oh. talk, we're not harvest, long past at harvest time. Okay. Probably the biggest one is corn earworm. And that's that little worm that gets in the end of your corn right there. Now, there's two ways I help control this right here. One is by planting early. Most of the time, if you plant, that's the reason we like to get our corn planted early because of the corn earworm. The earlier the corn, most of the time, the less worm pressure you have. The second thing is, is when that corn starts tasseling, you can treat with a bifenthrin insecticide or a spinosad insecticide over the top and that'll help my, uh, mitigate that problem, I guess is the best way to put it. Now sometimes we have more corn airborne problems than we do other times, certain years. And if you get it, if you get a worm in the top of that ear, just cut it out. Don't put the whole thing away. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Corn folks, you gotta be growing your own corn. And look here, I'm gonna touch on one thing right here. I got, I got to just hit this one time. We've got two varieties that I'm absolutely crazy about, one of them right here. And this is Jimmy Red Corn. We love to make that cornbread and grits out of it. We love to grow this one. And another one that I'm going to grow this year, I'm not growing Jimmy Red this year because we've got plenty of it in the freezer from last year, Hickory King, which is an old heirloom variety. It's a white corn that I love that I'm growing so this year. So how much of, going back to how much to grow, because I get this question too, of this Jimmy Red, you had it in the same patch that you had the G90 in, right? No. A couple of years ago? I had it in the same patch a couple of years ago? No, no, I did not. No, I rotated it. So how big it was this Jimmy Red? Now, the, the spot was about the same size. Yeah, okay. Maybe just a little bit bigger. It was just, it, I won't say it was a 40 by 45 plot. And so we harvested it. Now, we used it for some corn feed, some hog feed. And we still got a bunch left over. Um, I ground some up and gave it to my worms. And then that's pretty much all I've been using to make cornbread and grits. Yeah, so if you want to grow you a spot of field corn, I would say a 40 by 45 would be a good spot there to start with. And we just shell it and store it in the freezer till I get ready to grind yeah, it. Yeah, put it in the pillowcase and we'll get ready. We're just going to pull out what we want and grind it and have it fresh. So, folks, have a plan on growing your corn. Now, one other, I'm gonna, one's the last thing I'm going to say about corn. Okay? Mm -hmm. When it's time to harvest it, if you grow you a decent spot of this right here, have you a plan, action, <laughs> a plan of action in place to help with some family and friends to help you with this right here. It can be a little overwhelming at harvest yeah. time to put it up. 
So go ahead and have everything planned out of how you want to preserve it. Start early in the morning. You don't want to be shucking corn in the middle of the... When it's that day. time of the year, I am in the field. Because my job, one of my jobs is to pull it. And I do that by myself. I am in the corn patch at the break of day. Mm -hmm. Pulling corn. So and Then you shuck it. Then I shuck it. Then you kind of take and over. And then I it. silk it and cut it off. Yeah. Yep. But it's an all day thing. It's an all day thing. Great family activity, but it's not for somebody that don't want to work. Yeah, our kids used to help with it when they yep. were here. All right, so let's move on. Folks, got to plant your corn. There you have, we got some basics here. We have the corn growing guide. Have any other questions, put them down below or post in our Robo Road Facebook group because we yeah. got a lot of good corn growers in there. Yeah, comment what kind of corn you're growing this yep. year. What's your favorite? All right. Okay, Garden Spotlight, and we're going to throw up some pictures from Austin Donaldson and they just grow a little bit of everything. Now they're in zone eight. Wow. Now they didn't give me the state, but they gave me the town, Brooklet. And when I looked at the town, it says it's in Georgia. Never heard so of it. So they're kind of like where we at. Yep, cool. These pictures are awesome. Just a little bit of everything. Thank you, Austin. All right. Old goat drawing. Yep. Old goat is really hid this week. So if you didn't know, and you need to to show, there's an old goat hidden on the set here. So when we do a drawing every week, put your comments below if you found the old goat, and we'll send you a prize after we do our drawing and draw your name. Are we ready? Ready. This is from last week? Mm-hmm. Okay. And the winner is Jody Rutherford. There we go, Jody. Jody, send us your shipping address to CustServeHallStools.com and we'll get you a fabulous gift in the mail. All right. Corny joke. Corny joke. I'm ready. I'm focused. I'm well, ready. I'm going to do a corny joke. Well, we're talking about corn. We had a corny joke. Okay. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. You should get this one. Should get this one. That's pressure. Yes. Why does gossip spread so fast Cause corn in has, the corny field? Because the corn has ears. Because it moves from ear to ear, so uh, it's partially got yeah, it. Yeah, 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 it's kind of a twist on that. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, thank y'all folks. If you've never grown corn for it, I encourage you to try it. It's a great food source, growing your own food, being prepared. Hey, that's what it's all about. And I will promise you the taste is magnificently different than what you buy in the store. And you know exactly what's in there. So thank you for joining us. Now it's time for you to get dirty.